The day that I left Josh was the worst day I possibly could have imagined. We'd been together for five torturous years. I spent most of our relationship attempting to soothe his explosive episodes. His blood would boil until his face turned pink, the vein in his forehead throbbing as venomous words would drip from his lips. Living with him for so long, I felt hopeless, especially the day I left. That day was just like every day that I was with him, except that day we were living out of a hotel room. The walls of our previous apartment were haunted by the sounds of our screams, and the neighbor re refused to put up with it any longer. We caused too much of a disturbance. So the landlords didn't bother renewing our lease, and we couldn't find anywhere to live with our bad credit. I had been unable to work for years due to my nerve pain and PTSD. Josh had been unable to work because he was tired. I knew he was just lazy. Josh, my fiancé, a 23-year-old man-child, was sitting on the unmade hotel bed, sheets strewn across the room, coffee in hand. His eyes narrowed at me as he noticed my eyes open to the sunlight streaming across the small hotel room. I couldn't even wake you up. We missed the apartment viewing. His voice thundered against my tired ears. I'm sorry, I couldn't sleep at all last night. I had to take my sleeping medication. It must have knocked me out, I muttered, pulling my aching body up from the pristine mattress to confront the demon that haunted my every waking moment. His face held a strong resemblance to a small child who just sucked a lemon for the first time, while simultaneously looking like a constipated old man. <laughs> well, you should have woken up. If we can't find a place to live now, it will be all your fault. His voice echoed against the empty hotel walls. It seemed extra pitchy and annoying today. My service dog, Meatball, whined as he got louder. It seemed like even she agreed that he was being obnoxious today. She stared at me with her big brown eyes, begging for me to get him to shut up. That's not true, and I really can't talk about this right now. I just woke up. You could have gone without me to see the apartment. I said, desperately attempting to avoid another argument. The day hadn't even started yet. I dragged my feet across the old red carpet. The fabric was rough against my feet, and I was grateful for the sensation to focus on as I felt a psychogenic seizure starting. I was diagnosed with stress-induced seizures a few years into my relationship with him, and to this day, I believe he was the cause of them. Though, of course, I did have one when I found out when my favorite band, My Chemical Romance, reunited. Perhaps I should blame it on that. <laughs> we're going to be homeless for even longer now, just because you were too lazy to wake up on time. I couldn't have gone without you. You would have gotten upset if I left you behind. I sighed deeply as his yelling penetrated my concentration. I really can't do this. Stop yelling at me. I just woke up and I can't have a seizure to start my morning. I felt the anxiety swirl in my stomach, rushing its way up my throat, threatening to choke me. Josh was very aware of my seizure condition, but that didn't mean he was ever respectful about it. You can't always use that as an excuse. You fucked up, and now we're going to be homeless. Just apologize for not waking up on time. His face grew more and more red. Oddly enough, I remember thinking that he looked uh, like a radish in that moment. Just stop screaming at me, please. I can't handle this right now. I started shaking, the stress rising in my body, and I could feel it approach the threshold. My hands were unable to stay still as I poured the store-bought coffee into the paper hotel cup. I heard his screaming grow louder as the world around me started to blur into a dark cloud. I felt my legs give out beneath me, and I felt the rough texture of the floor scrape against my face. I suddenly felt my vocal cords erupt as fear washed over me. I couldn't control my body anymore. The tremors clenched every muscle in my body, straining all the strength I had against me, twisting me into horrific positions. I was a husk of anxiety and despair. I heard someone screaming, please stop, repeatedly. I hung on to that voice, my voice, hoping that I would come back to full consciousness when the screams ended. Suddenly, my voice was muffled, and I felt my breathing get heavier. I tried to see out my eyes. The suffocating darkness surrounded me 
as I shook uncontrollably. I was unable to catch my breath. That isn't normal, I thought to myself. I heard the door slam, and the room got quiet except for my desperate sobs and gasps to get air. The seizure was straining every muscle in my body, causing an unbearable burning. I focused on the pain and slowly found myself climbing back into my body. I felt the feeling of control return to my stomach, then my legs, then arms, and eventually my hands. Desperate for air, I reached up to my face, attempting to push whatever it was out of the way. My hands connected with something soft. It was a pillow. He had put a pillow on my face in the middle of the seizure. Shaky and exhausted, I pulled my phone out of my pocket, only to discover that it was wet from the coffee I spilled. I wiped my hands and phone off on my pants and quickly told my friends what had happened. My fingers mistyped as I shook, still feeling off. I texted on our group discord. He put a pillow on my face while I was having a seizure. I ran into the white hotel bathroom and turned the shower on to drown out my voice. I hopped in the video chat section as I pressed my back against the door, just in case Josh came back. I cried as quietly as possible as I waited for them to answer, but felt like hours passed until my friend's voices broke through the noise of the shower and my sobs. You're going to move in with me and you don't have a choice, my redheaded best friend Julia said sternly. Julia was my closest friend in the group chat, and she lived only three hours from me in San Diego. What? I can't do that. I have nothing. I have no money. Bad credit. I mean, Josh has access to all my bank accounts, I said, panic oozing from my voice. Morgan interjected. Don't worry about that. I'll take care of it. You just need to break up with Josh and get in the Uber that I order. I could see her wispy brown hair in a messy bun as a cigarette dangled from her worried scowl. She was the mother of the group, constantly giving us stern advice, but always from a loving place. I'm scared. He won't let me leave if I just say I'm going to Julia's. Tears filled my eyes. God damn it, Destin. Morgan raised her voice. You can't stay there. He could have killed you. If you don't leave today, I will fly out and I will pull you out by your hair. She was right. If I stayed, something like this was bound to happen again. How many injuries from these accidents could my body really sustain? I was falling apart already. It was only a matter of time before he killed me and blamed it on my mental illness. How close was he really to smothering me with that pillow? I didn't want to stay and find out. Okay, can you guys stay on the phone with me while I leave? I sobbed softly, whispering in case Josh was close. Of course, let's just go get your stuff, Julia pushed. I opened the door to the dimly lit hotel room. I sighed and pet my cats, knowing this would be the last I saw of them. I had gotten them with Josh, but I knew Julia was allergic. Mama purred against my hand, not knowing my fate. I was going to leave this time. I didn't know what the future had in store for me, but it had to be better than whatever level of hell this was. Suddenly, I heard a knock on the door and my breath hitched. It was him. It had to be. He must have forgotten his key again. Idiot. I thought as I brought my phone with my friends anxiously waiting on the other line. I held the phone between me and the door like a shield. I opened it to see Josh's smiling face holding two plates of food. Honey, I think you need to relax. I got you some food and tonight I wanted to take you on a really nice date. His sickly sweet voice rang out against the tension in the air. My eyes narrowed into daggers as I realized what he was doing. He was attempting to get me to forget what just happened using bribery. I opened the door for him to come in. Actually, I'm not feeling well, and I don't want to go out tonight. I need to speak to you about what just happened. He looked at my phone as I spoke, noticing our audience. Yeah, we can talk, but I don't want your friends listening. I want them on the phone for this. My voice quivered, along with my confidence. What's going on? His voice darkened as he realized the seriousness of the situation. There was a long pause as I drew my breath. 
The tension hung in the air like knives. I'm breaking up with you. I'm taking the dog and I'm moving in with Julia. I stated bluntly. I didn't care if I hurt him anymore. I was tired. This relationship was a dead limb, rotting on my body as I struggled and begged it to come back to life. It needed to be amputated, and I was now my own surgeon. His screams broke my realization. How could you do this to me? We're a family. We're supposed to be together no matter what. You can't take me, Paul. Today you put a pillow on my head during the seizure. Last year you gave me multiple concussions. This was the final straw. I stated, ice in my voice as I shoved random articles of clothing in my bag. He grabbed my phone out of my hand, screaming profanities as he attempted to stop me from packing. Usually I'd be scared, but that day, with my friends backing me up, I knew I'd be okay. Let me go, Josh, or my friends will call the police. I pushed past him, grabbing my phone out of his hand as he attempted to fight me off, now only half-heartedly as he realized I was serious this time. I pulled Meatball along behind me. Without missing a beat, she followed, wagging her tail as we left the monster behind. I cried violently as I ran out the door, dragging my few belongings with me. I felt a wave, wave of grief wash over me as I shoved myself and Meatball into the back of the black Tesla that waited for me outside of the hotel. Meatball licked my hands, attempting to calm me down as we left the hotel behind her blocky head nudging into my legs the whole ride. We drove across the barren Southern California landscape for three hours, and I allowed the emptiness of the scenery to fill me with a sense of relief and terror as I realized this would be the beginning of an entirely new life. Yeah.